Hi, welcome to Physics Teacher. In this video, we're doing a grade 12 physics experiment called the Atwood machine. And what we're going to be doing is using the motion of these masses as they fall on this pulley to see if we can calculate the value for the acceleration due to gravity, of course, here on Earth, because that's where I am. Now the lab handout I use with my class, that will be available for you to download for free in the descriptions. And also to help you analyze the data, I would recommend using either Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. And if you don't know how to analyze data in those, you can check out this video here, which I've made to help you analyze data in Excel. All right, so let's go over the setup. So we have our ruler here, where zero is at the bottom of this table. And then we have a pulley. It's not perfectly frictionless, but for this experiment, we are assuming that it is frictionless. But that is going to be an error in some of our measurements. And then on the pulley, we have two different masses, not the same weight. Uh, this one is heavier than this one, so when I let go, it falls. Now, it's not going to fall with an acceleration due to gravity because it's not in free fall. Okay, on this mass here, we have the force of gravity acting down on it, but we also have a tension force acting up due to the force of gravity on the mass on the other side of the machine. So what we need to do to calculate gravity is first calculate the acceleration of this mass, and you can do that by figuring out the distance it travels, knowing its initial velocity is going to be zero, and then you can even use the timeline in the video to see the time it takes to fall. We're going to do that for multiple combinations of masses just so we have a variety of data. Once you have the acceleration, then you could figure out what gravity is knowing what the two different masses in the machine are. If you're not sure how to do either of those, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video because I'll do a sample calculation for each. All right, let's get started with the experiment. All right, so first we're starting with a 500 gram mass here and 270 gram mass here. And so you can measure the height and we'll drop in three, two, one. And we're going to do that two more times and you can find the average in time. Three, two, one. If we lost this at the top, but that's okay. It was there for the rest of the motion. Three, two, one. All right, let's move on to the next set. Right, so you can measure the height. Here we have a 100 gram mass, and here we have 70 gram mass. Three, two, one. All right, three, two, one. And one more time, three, two, one. All right, let's move on to the next one. So now we have 100 grams here and 50 grams here. Three, two, one. It's okay if it flies off. That's why I'm wearing safety goggles. Three, two, one. And one last time. Three, two, one. All right, let's move on to our next one. All right, so here we have 200 grams here 
and 150 grams here. Three, two, one. You go again. Three, two, one. And one last time. Three, two, one. All right, now we move on to our last set. All right, so here we have 500 grams here and 400 grams here. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. And three, two, one. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the Atwood Machine Lab. If you are going to do the calculations and you're not sure how, remember right now I'm going to go over some sample calculations. Once you're done, be sure to let me know in the comments what value for G you get and any sources of error you think were present. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next lab. All right, so I'm going to go over two calculations that we have to do in this lab. The first is to find the acceleration of the large mass as it falls. So let's go over that. This is going to be uh, a motion problem. So we know when we let go, its initial velocity is going to be zero. Now we have to measure two things. We need to measure its displacement down. So we need to measure delta dy and the time it takes to get there. So that's another measurement we need to get from the experiment. Let's do a sample calculation here. So let's say it falls a total distance of, uh, say, half a meter. So 0 0.5 meters down. And let's say the time takes 0 0.8 seconds, just for example. Well, with knowing the initial velocity to be zero and these two pieces of information, we can use the following motion equation to figure out what the acceleration actually will be. Now, since initial velocity is zero, this whole term will end up being zero. So we can just ignore that. So our equation simplifies a little bit. We get displacement is equal to one half a delta t squared. All right, so multiply both sides by 2. So we get 2 delta dy equals a times delta t squared. And then we're going to divide both sides by time squared so that we get the acceleration is 2 times the displacement divided by time squared. And in our example calculation here, that is 2 times 0 0.5 meters. Notice that I made down positive for this half of the pulley. All divided by time, which is 0 0.8 seconds squared, which would give us an acceleration of 1.6 meters per second squared down. All right, the second calculation is to figure out what then is the acceleration due to gravity. So in this case, we're going to have to look at forces. So let's look at the forces that actually act on our system here. So we have the force of gravity here. Let's call it big MG. We have force of gravity here. We'll call it small MG. And then of course we have tension forces. Now the tension is going to be the same because it is the same rope. And we do have, essentially, we're assuming it to be a frictionless pulley. And then it says the motion goes around the pulley. I just rotate my positive coordinate system there. So let's apply Newton's second law. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply Newton's second law to this whole system for the sum of both masses. So that's going to be m plus m times acceleration. And I can do that because the masses are going to be accelerating together because they're connected by a rope. The pulley simply changes the direction, but not the magnitude.
All right, so then we look at all external forces. Now, tension is not an external force, but if you accidentally put it in, that's fine, because you're just going to have tension minus tension. It's going to go away anyways, because all these internal forces have um, an action-reaction pair that's just going to cancel. So all we really have then is this large force of gravity, big MG, in the positive direction, so big MG. And then the small force of gravity in the negative direction, because on the right of the pulley, the positive direction is up, so minus mg. I just made the positive direction on both sides to be the same direction as acceleration, so that we don't get confused there. And that's going to equal m plus m times a. All right, so I can factor out a g here, which will give me big M minus small m. And then I can divide both sides by this bracket. And what I get is that g is equal to a multiplied by this ratio of masses, the sum of both masses, divided by the difference of the masses. And in our example, we have 1.6 meters per second squared. And I haven't made up um, examples for masses. Let's just pick some numbers here. Let's say this one is... 0.5 kilograms and this one 0.4 kilograms so let's see how close my made-up example is to being actually on earth so we have the large one which is 0.5 plus 0.4 so that's 0.9 kilograms all divided by 0.5 minus 0.4 so 0.1 kilograms and so that gives us an acceleration due to gravity of 14.4 meters per second squared. So in my made up example, we are not on Earth, <laughs> but that's all right. It is an experiment, so there could also just be experimental errors, which there will be in our example as well.